It's okay, viewers. Don't be frightened. It's not as bad as it seems. Hello and welcome back. Uh, yeah, this was a bit of a shitty machine to work on. It's taken me a good two weeks to get something out of it. It was a real pain in the ass, but it was all worthwhile in the end, so stick around and find out what happened. Some of the eagle-eyed amongst you may recognise this machine because it was in a video that I did where I got a bunch of pretty cheap stuff off a local classified ad and this was one of the machines that I got then and the guy told me at the time that it didn't work and I think in that other video I tried to power it up and nothing happened not even fans spinning in the PSU or anything and the guy said he thought it was a PSU but I checked the PSU in the other video and it seemed to be fine so clearly something else going on here so it doesn't bode well that this is going to go smoothly but let's see what happens yeah I quite like this case actually and um, you get a lot of these blue cases, well, cases of bits of colour on them from the turn of the millennium. And this one looks quite sort of smart and businesslike, whereas a lot of the others are sort of fudgy curves of blue and orange and such. So I do like the front of it, but it's got a few issues. As you can see here, the top looks like it's had acid sprayed all over the top of it or something, and the paint's burnt through and is rusting all over in little sort of pockmarks. So I think I'm going to have to get the wire wall and some spray paint and see if I can sort that out. I feel obliged to do this because recently I was chatting to a nice guy from Arizona who has watched a couple of videos on the channel and he was reprimanding me for flagrantly throwing away battered cases. He made me feel bad, so I'm not going to do it anymore. We're going to see if we can rescue this one. So aside from that, I mean, this case, you'll see the interior shortly. I, I won't spoil the surprise for you, but... um. It's it's okay. It's sort of relatively clean. There's nothing major. One problem is it's got... I've, first of all, I thought the, the case was warped, but it's not. The, the bottom has just kind of popped out. You know, it's sort of bunk, <laughs> sort of sticking down, and it's wobbling. And if you push it with your fist, you can pop it back to the correct position, and it sits evenly on its feet. And then suddenly it'll decide of its own accord. It's got bunk, and then it, it's rocking again. So we'll have to sort that out too. So we've seen some of this stuff before. Um, we've got a graphics card in here, which is a GeForce 2 MX400. So it's a useful card, maybe not brilliant for this kind of era of, of Athlon XP, but certainly on an earlier Athlon, it would be quite a good card to have. And yeah, look at the filth on this, even on the ribbon cables. Nasty. I've got all of the cables out of the way, so we've got... The floppy drive and the hard drive are held in a caddy, which is quite cool, so we can just get that off. It took a bit of fiddling, but it did come off, and we'll put that to one side and have a look at what's going on in there in just a second. And that leaves the case fairly empty. We can slide out the optical drive, and it is... Yeah, it's just a, I think, a drive from A-Open, so nothing fancy start getting bits out of here so heat sink off processor out uh, this processor looks like it's been maybe a little bit overheated at some point it's kind of singed on the back on the label and there's kind of a brown kind of heat mark on the other side so we'll see now we can just strip away the rest of the stuff and get it out i mean just look at this look at this i've seen cow pats that look cleaner than this I'm going to take the PSU as well out because there's some kind of black shit all over this thing and I want to be able to get into every sort of corner to clean it all up, I think. So usually I'm too lazy to take the things out and give them a proper wash in like a bowl of soapy water, but I think I have to make an exception this time. This thing definitely needs a bath. The graphics card too, so they're going to have to go into the bathroom and get a nice wash. And while that was drying, it's just back to the other stuff and it's just the usual, a mixture of IPA, wet wipes, brushes and bits of kitchen paper and all just rubbed down, get the surface dirt off. Mr. Clean gets rid of dirt and grime and grease in just a minute. Mr. Clean will clean your whole house and everything that's in it. Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean. Ah, it's always a relief when the housework is over. But look at this gleaming thing that you see before you. So it's a far cry from the dirty piece of rubbish that we had 
before the bath but now it's a nice shiny purple thing and i gave it a quick look and over there's no bulging caps there's no dripping acid there's no blotchy sort of ruined traces or anything so it looks okay so we'll put it all together and try it again and see if we get any further than we did the last time nothing special about this GeForce 2 MX400, it's Sparkle, is the manufacturer, it's got 64 megs. I would personally probably put this in a sort of slightly slower build, maybe an Athlon Thunderbird or something like that, but hopefully it'll work. And the motherboard is in from Elite Group, it's K7S 5A Pro, and this again I would have probably put a... Uh, I'm not that interested in XP, Athlon XP build, so I'd probably put uh, an Athlon Thunderbird in this. It's a Socket 462, which is basically just a rebranded Socket A. It's got an SIS chipset and can take both DDR and SD RAM memory, maximum of 1 gig, and it's got 4 times AGP. So the slightly singed and burnt looking processor is an Athlon XP 1800 plus, 266 megahertz bus speed and it's got 256 kilobytes of cache on board so these are the days when amd had faster processors comparative to intel than the actual speed would have warranted so it's called an 1800 plus but its actual real speed is 1533 megahertz but comparatively it was faster than that so it was like an 1800 pentium i guess so things did were well, a slight improvement on what it was before because it was, it was just dead before even the the fans didn't spin or anything but now after the clean putting it back together the cpu fan spins the power supply fan spins and there's clearly power getting to it but no image at all so i went through a whole bunch of graphics cards and it didn't seem to make any difference whether it was pci agp or whatever um yeah so there's life there but I'm not going to persevere with this anymore, so I'll leave that to troubleshoot for another time, I think. I ran into my storeroom to get another socket A board, and then as I was shuffling through them, came across this, I forgot I had this slot A instead of socket A, so we're going to build it with this instead. Now this is a Gigabyte 71 XE, I think it's 71 XE, it could be 7 IXE, and this is a slot A motherboard for slot a processors with 512 kilobytes of on board cache and i just happen to have a 600 megahertz one of those so agp is a bit slower i think it's only two times agp on this and it's got isa slots which is nice so two isa slots five pci and agp and we're missing the onboard sound on this board so we've only got a couple of serial ports a parallel port two usb and ps2 for mouse and keyboard we're limited to SD RAM on this board, no uh, DDR like the other one. I guess they spaced them out like that to make room for the mounting hole on the motherboard. The board's powered by AMD 750 chipset, so as mentioned, that's AGP 2.0 and DDR up to 768 megabytes, and that's PC 100. The chipset also supports a 200 megahertz bus speed and it was the very first very first chipset to be able to do that so cool so this is the processor the brick of the processor so cartridge similar to the early pentium 3s and the pentium 2 i think it uses the same edge connector except they turned it around the other way so that you couldn't get them confused and put the wrong things in the wrong boards and this is one of the early ones as well this is an argon core which was the first core of the athlon and I think it's called the Athlon Classic, and then the Thunderbird was the socketed version that came later. And this was a third iteration of it. I think it started with 500 megahertz, then there was a 550, and then there was a 600. And these um, processors do use that 200 megahertz front side bus. And these early ones, I think they were the fastest processors in the world at the time, about 20% faster than their equivalent Pentium 3s. And for memory, we've got 328 meg sticks of PC100. So I'm going to quickly put all this together on the box and give it a quick try to make sure it all works. And also I want to test out that GeForce 2 MX400 on a different board and see if it works or not. And work it did, uh, at least to post. So it looks like at least that graphics card's working 
in a basic form so that's cool and I'll try and use that for this build. So of course can't do anything with all of that now that it's working because the case is still a battered mess. So I didn't film this but basically all I did was I gave it a rub down to roughen the surface so that it would take paint and masked it all off. I used some rust eater so I used some wire wool and there's a few little rusty patches but nothing major and then put some of this rust inhibitor on it and then I had I decided to try the spray putty filler to try and fill in those little pock marks on the top so this is stuff that you spray on and let it dry and it should kind of fill the uneven surfaces and that worked okay uh, in hindsight I would have rather used normal filler to get a smoother finish but it's come out all right, I think. So, yeah, I think it'll be good to build into this machine now. Still got the wonky bottom. It still pops out. I haven't quite figured out how to sort that one out yet. And I did. It came out quite nice. So once the thing's back and all the masking's been ta taken off it, you can see there were still some tiny little pop marks, but you've got to get pretty damn close to see them in the lid. And everything else looks pretty nice, flat and smooth. So I gave the front panel a bit of a wipe down with IPA and we can pop that back on and then we're now in a position to start doing some building. So it's just the usual stuff, get the motherboard in, get the power supply back in, get the drives in. I feel like I've been doing a lot of building lately, I'm going to do some other stuff for the next couple of weeks I think, but uh, yeah this will be a nice little machine to finish off on. And it kind of saves some space in my storeroom as well. So instead of having an empty case and a motherboard lying around, I'm going to have a complete system. And I think this one would be quite fun to use. There's another issue I encountered with this was the USB connector. It didn't have like a single connector and it was also an 8 pin connector was I think they're usually 9 with one blanked off and these were all individual little jumpers on each wire and I didn't pay attention when I took them off. I thought it was a single block and now I've no idea how to put them back. So I found this diagram that seems to give the right information. So I've used this to reconnect everything. So it's about now that I started having a few issues as the video title said, it began to be a bit of a pain in the ass and play up in various ways, as you shall see. So the first thing that happened was this. So having booted this fine when it was outside the case now when you boot it it gets stuck on this checking nvram so googling around a lot of things say that this a lot of people suggest that this is a bios issue and that resetting the bios and various things like taking the coin cell out and letting it completely drain of power and then putting it back in which should be the thing to solve this now that doesn't make sense because it was fine when it was on the box but not knowing any better i tried that first so I sat down and had a good think about it and the only thing I could think is it's got to be something to do with the case and the only thing that I've done in the case that I didn't do outside the case was connect the front panel connectors. So I disconnected the USB front panel connector and it immediately all started working again. So there's clearly something wrong with the way that I did that. And just when I thought I'd solved that problem I started getting this. So suddenly graphics corruption on this GeForce 2 MX400 which is a real shame. And because it has been running okay for a while, I was kind of wondering, you know, because it was, looked like there was a lot of heat evidence, overheating evidence in that case originally on the processor and such. So I wondered if perhaps it was overheating. So I might have a look at putting some new thermal paste on there at some point shortly. But in the meantime, just to get going, I just grabbed a Voodoo 3 3000 and we'll stick that in there. So that's like a fallback. I could use that Voodoo 3 if I wanted to, though I think it's probably a bit long in the tooth for this machine and a GeForce 2 would have been a much better match. But I don't think I've got any other AGP cards in the ballpark of this kind of era of machine. So the GeForce 2 MX400 has been put aside for a minute and we're back to booting normally and with legible legible writing, which is a relief. So at least we're, we're moving forward. The next thing was when I just thought I was at a point where I could probably install something, like namely Windows 98, the optical drive started to play up. So the door would open sometimes, sometimes it wouldn't. Sometimes it would open but then close before you had a chance to put a disc in it. And it was generally 
a bit of a pain in the ass. First of all, I thought it was because the machine was lying on its side, but I turned it and sat it upright, and it was still doing the same crazy shit, so I think I might have to replace a new optical drive. Should probably have tested this before I put it in the case. So what I did actually force it to stay open long enough to take a CD, uh, it still wouldn't read it. So, well, this is my Windows 98 CD. It did, did read other discs, but not this one, so not much use for installing an operating system. Definitely needs a new optical drive. New optical drive is plugged in, not committing myself to putting anything in the case just yet. So this one has the same problem with this Windows 98 disc, so I guess I can't install straight into Windows 98. Uh, had the same problem reading, but it read other discs okay, so I think it's probably okay to use, and I'm not having that crazy problem with the disc drawer. That gave me an idea, because I've had this kicking around for a while, so this is my Windows 98 upgrade CD. So I'm going to run through an upgrade just to spare the moment. So I'm going to install DOS and I'm going to run right through upgrading DOS and Windows 3.1 to Windows 98 using a real upgrade disk, something I never did back in the day. One quick install of DOS 6.22 later and hit this. So now it says it's looking for the boot record on ID 0, it finds it and then it doesn't go any further. So got an issue with booting on this hard drive by the looks of it. So we can add a hard disk drive to the collection of things that I should have tested before I put them in the case. So this one's actually a 10 gig hard drive and caused its own problem initially when I was just trying to boot into it because I thought there was some stuff on here but got this message saying no it turned out it was a non-DOS partition that just had to remove, install DOS 6.22 again and then we're back up and running with a good hard drive and a good install of DOS. Now that I've got some things that actually work, I can quickly tear out those things that don't work and replace them with these good ones, and then we should be good to continue our installation. Pleased to say Windows 3.11 went on without a hitch, so now we can get the bits and pieces out of this boxed version of Windows 98 Upgrade Edition, and we'll get that installed. So that was a long-winded path to getting to Windows 98. It actually went quite smoothly if it wasn't for the problem with the hard drive. This whole upgrade process would have been quite painless I think. And this isn't to Windows 98 second edition, this is just vanilla Windows 98. I can't remember what build, four point something I think it was. So yeah look at that active desktop menu thing. I haven't seen that for a long long time. So that's kind of a working system now get the graphics card secured and I've also put in here a Sound Blaster Live value so we've got some sound and graphics get that fastened down with a funky little card retainer there and that's just a case of getting some drivers on so we've got that Voodoo 3 3000 in there we've got some drivers on for that get some drivers on for the Sound Blaster Live and get some drivers on for the chipset so I was putting things back together again then I remembered I haven't connected that front USB panel and I want to connect it because it'd be handy to have it there. So I reconnected everything according to the diagram that I used initially and got that same problem where the thing hung checking VRAM on boot. So I took everything out again and decided to check it with a multimeter. So doing this what I found was where the diagram has both of the 5 volt pins at the top and they both run parallel down each side of the connector it's not actually the way it is on this one one side matches the diagram but the other side is reversed to what it shows on the diagram so when i switch the connectors around on one side i suddenly got a clean boot so at least that solved that problem <laughs> So cool, the system works, and now I can get that lovely, shiny, freshly painted side panel on and the machine will be complete. No, oh, I forgot about the wobbly bottom. And it's closed now, so I can't push the bottom or mess about with it. All I'm going to do now is put a piece of self-adhesive foam on one of the feet and that's made it stable. I'll find a more permanent solution at another time. I'll probably put one of those... Um, those furniture saver pads underneath one of the feet, I think. 
all that remains is to load a game and see how it looks. So I'm going to put on Medal of Honor Allied Assault, a game I played quite a lot of back in the day, though I quickly fell off the main story and started playing on the game Spy Arenas. This was the first game that I played properly online. I think I spent a good, good few months just doing nothing but playing in those arenas. It was kind of the first cover shooter, I think, possibly on the PC. And once I got into the main game, oh dear me, something has gone terribly wrong here. And it was my own stupid fault. All I should have done was read the spec on the box, the game box, and seen that it was a DirectX 8 game. And I'm running on a DirectX 6 graphics card, so if it was DirectX 7 I might have stood a fighting chance, but this is never going to work, so I'm going to have to go off and locate another graphics card from somewhere. And then I suddenly remembered that I'd meant to try some new thermal paste on the GeForce 2 MX400 that came with the machine originally, so that's what I did. Whipped the heatsink off and cleaned it up, put some new thermal paste on there and closed it up. Uh, I didn't film what actually happened because it was just basically the same as before. Still getting screen corruption, I thought was okay for a few minutes, and then it started to glitch, so that card needs looking at a bit more. What I did have was in one of my other machines, I have a GeForce 2 Ti. So I quickly popped that in because the drivers were already there from when I tried the MX. And we'll give this a go. Now, this is a DirectX 7 card and probably a mistake to load this game in hindsight. But uh, I think a DirectX 7 card should be okay with the DirectX 8 game. There'll just be a few features that it doesn't support. So we'll see how this looks. And yeah, you can see straight away it's not all whirly and weird like it was on the Voodoo. So this card supports uh, at least a significant chunk of DirectX 8's features and makes for a playable game. So that's cool. I'll probably end up actually playing this on a machine that supports DirectX 8 and not this machine and I'll find something a bit more suitable to play at DirectX 7. And I think I will stick with the, the GeForce 2 for this machine, though I'll put this TI back in the Socket A machine it came from. And I think I'll actually, well, I'll try and see if I can do anything with that other card. I'll be a bit more careful about giving it some new cooling paste and stuff and see if I can get it to work. And in the meantime, I'm going to order another MX400 off eBay anyway because they are cheap and they are plentiful and I'll stick it in as soon as it arrives and yeah good so there it is I think it looks like a pretty smart machine to be honest quite pleased with the way it's turned out and given the amount of pain that it caused me uh, I was expecting to build an XP machine after all and it's turned out to be something totally different but I'm quite pleased it's a nice little addition a slot A addition to the collection. It needs some stickers. It needs some case badges. That's all I can say. So they've been ordered from Geekenspiel on eBay and should be here shortly. So there'll be some K7 and Sound Blaster badges going on the machine soon. Uh, in the meantime, I love the way it looks, I think. And yes, some of you may have noticed there's some different chimes going on there. What I had to do, which I didn't film again because I've already done enough installing on this video, was I loaded Windows 98 SE from scratch because what I didn't realize was when I did that upgrade that it had kept the original DOS partition. So I had like two gigabyte DOS partition and no way of extending it that I can think of short of getting hold of a, some kind of third party partitioning software so I just thought screw it flattened everything and reinstalled Windows 98 SE that was a nice experience doing that upgrade so that pretty much wraps it up it was quite a chore making this machine but it was worth it in the end and it's made for quite a long video as well so quite enough time has been spent on this um, I'm going to let it run out with a bit of gameplay because a couple of people said that they wanted to 
to see more gameplay. I'm toying with the idea of doing some, I don't want to get into long game reviews, but maybe some shorter game reviews on specific hardware, so it sort of rolls the hardware up with a, a bit of a sort of 10 minute gameplay or something like that. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. It'd be great if you could give me a thumbs up and make comments and all the usual kind of stuff. I hope to see you on the next video and thank you very much for watching this one.
Thanks. They would have killed me for certain. Stick close to me at all times. Let's get going, Lieutenant.